Good morning, good, good evening, good afternoon. Oh, that was all back to front. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you're watching, whatever time you're listening to this podcast, welcome to Your Onion. This is season two, episode four. Hello and welcome. Uh, here we peel away the layers of business in the Middle East and give you the opportunity to learn about the faces behind organize, organizations and companies in the region. And so our special guest today is Paula um, I'm not going to say a surname. Go on, say it. Manzanera. <laughs> Manzanera <laughs> Smith, because she got married last year. Congratulations. Correct. Thank you so much. Uh, she is the marketing manager for Qatar for Virgin Megastore. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for it's coming on the show. You be have here. been on this. You've been on uh, Your Onion before. No, or I was, was on, on Doha Heat. Heat. Oh, you're on yeah. Doha Heat. So you're familiar with the whole. Um, yes, I indeed. Uh, interviewing. <laughs> um, so, Paolo, just give us give the audience uh, a brief insight into who you are and how you came about coming here to Qatar. Ooh. Short Ooh. story, long story. <laughs> oh, you know, medium. We've got half an hour, so. Uh. Okay. Um, well, I was born in South America. Um, Whereabouts? Colombia. Okay. And um, when I was seven, uh, we moved to Spain. Um, I. Dad started working in the Middle East by the time. So what was your dad doing? Um, before that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no he's, I, a, he's an engineer. He's so an engineer. He got hired in by Aramco. Yes. Okay. So um, we kind of live uh, be in between Europe and the Middle East Yeah. Uh, from then on. But I did all my studies in England. Um, so you were like um, boarding school? Yes, I went okay. to boarding school and where then university. Where about in the UK? Canterbury. Oh, Canterbury. Very nice. Oh, very Canterbury. Gosh. Actually, really? I think our previous guest, Stuart, came from Canterbury. In Kent. In Kent, yes. yes. Love Kent. Yes. Gardens of England. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I lived in Tunbridge uh, for a couple of years. Oh, nice. And my dad worked in Sevenoaks. So, yeah, I love that area. That's so really nice. you were in Canterbury for how long? Uh, boarding school. Uh, since I was 13. Till uh, 18? Till, yeah, something okay. like that. Nice. And then you went to university? Then I did my first degree in travel and tourism, but I went back to Barcelona. So you did that, that in Barcelona? Once okay. I finished, um, didn't want why, to why did you do? Why did you go to Barcelona? What was the draw? My family was there. Oh, and okay. I'm, okay right. I'm actually from Barcelona, yes. I love that city. Um, I miss it. Hold on, you're a Colombian? I was born there. <laughs> okay, you were born in Colombia, but your parents are Spanish. Yes. Okay, right. We're there. Uh, so I basically went there. I wanted to travel. I knew I wanted to see the world. So that's, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Yeah. So I decided to do... Uh, it wasn't a, really a career at the time. It was like... Travel um, and tourism. No, I know no. what you mean. It was like, why are you doing that? You know, is it, are you just going to be a travel agent sitting at a desk? Exactly. And, yes. All my friends were like, why are you doing this? <laughs> But for me, I, it was more about learning languages, mm -hmm. um, traveling the world and, you know, kind of, I wanted to, you know, even do the hostess thing for two years, you yeah, know, to see the to world. Yeah, just to experience, see the exactly. world. Exactly. Well, it didn't pan out like that. It never does anyway. So you got the degree. And uh, then, and then uh, my dad told me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to continue studying. I wanted to go back to, to England. Uh, so I applied to universities. Um, I did one A level. I had one A level, so I had to do another two A levels to uh, enter university. So I did that, and then uh, I got a sandwich course in uh, Bedfordshire, and I did marketing. Well, at the beginning it was business. Then yeah. I, because I I had a little fight with my dad. I wanted to go psychology, but he said this is not going to give you a lot of money and listening to problems of people. And he was more into the business <laughs> side. Yeah, so I compromised like yeah. with marketing and the marketing side that I like and that I try to apply even nowadays is just understanding the customer values. So, so more about consumer behavior and how we can adapt to that. So that's interesting. So you, you did want to go into psychology, but you kind of went because of the way your dad was feeling, yeah. you thought, okay, what else can I do that is, you know, people, you know, more kind of thinking about business the product, and, business. And I 
also have to please myself, obviously. Absolutely. So I kind of, I had a very good um, te- um, professor in university, so he kind of lured me. The first year was common to all the disciplines, so he lured me into marketing. Oh, okay. And I really, really, I actually did my thesis on consumer behavior. So, so which university did you end up in? Uh, Bedfordshire. Oh, Bedford again. So yeah. you did uh, like one year course before actually doing your yes, master's. Okay, exactly. Cool. Um, so I stayed there, then I got a scholarship uh, for a master's degree, so yeah. I stayed there, I did my okay. master's, and then it was time to... So know. how many years were, were you in Bedfordshire? Um, and what's Bedfordshire like? I've never really... I was in Luton, not very nice, oh, very okay. industrial. <laughs> That's where the university is. Yeah, yeah. okay. But uh, I mean... In it's the quite seventies, isn't it? It's quite uh, very seventies architecture. Yes, correct. Some... Very, very industrial, yeah. and um, nobody knew at the time what Luton was. But then uh, EasyJet came and they based themselves oh, they there. Based... So, oh, yes. so everybody, everybody knew. knew. <laughs> <laughs> and th- the campus outside the city is really nice. I yeah. mean, it's, it's your typical campus, university campus of any other university in England. Yeah. But the one in the city, yeah, it's it's, it's very rough. Kind yeah. of, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we had. I love the university because it was very vocational university. Mm-hmm. So they really prepare you for uh, for your real job. Yeah, you know. So I liked the program, and uh, it was fun. It was yeah. really fun. So after that, after that, I went uh, to Greece. Actually, okay, I lived there for three years. Um, so I did my minor in European languages. Where I had already two languages from my um, travel and tourism, so so they were up, Spanish, um, Italian and French. Okay, yeah. so you could speak Spanish, but you did Italian and French yes, as well. Okay, exactly. Right. So I end up uh, giving uh, lessons to uh, Greek people of uh, in in English. I had my proficiency, obviously, and um, I was giving. Um, classes to uh, children of all ages, even yeah. adults, uh, about in, uh, in English, French, and Spanish. Wow. And so that not was marketing at all? You just wanted to teach? Well, I, did it, I had to do the marketing and lure the students oh, okay. into, the, yeah, yeah. into the school. Okay. But it wasn't really much marketing. I mean, what I've always, that's what I wanted to do psychology, and, and what I always wanted also is to give something to the community mm-hmm. to to help people around you know i think more and more in this world we need that no oh, absolutely <laughs> no for sure um so i was very happy i mean um teaching is giving knowledge to people and it's one of the things that i i really enjoyed yeah but well um my engagement i was engaged to be married my engagement finished i mean we broke up with a um, greek yes okay correct. And then I, my parents at the time moved to Lebanon. So I went, I mean, home is where my family is. Yes. So I went back to Lebanon and um, I lived there for around six years. Yeah. Yeah. My parents were living there before, so I was traveling back and forward. And did you get work there? Yeah. Okay. I worked there. In marketing? Nothing to In do with teaching. marketing again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> or teaching. Um it was more, I was working with a sound and, uh, and lighting company. Oh, really? So we were doing a lot of projects uh, with concerts and, um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And your so role was different. what? To I was the office manager of the okay. whole company. Yeah. So it was a small uh, company, but we had one of the biggest clients in the region. That was George Wasuf. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a what very was it, famous actor. And uh, what was it like doing business in Lebanon? Was it, you know, was it a shock to the system or? Yeah, definitely. Coming yeah. from Europe, yeah. it is, definitely. Uh, it took me a, some time to adapt, but um, I think because we have these Latin roots, I mean, it kind of, the mixture in between, um, ah, I adapted well. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. No, I can, uh, I can believe that. <laughs> so after that uh, six years stint in Lebanon? Did you, did your family move or did you? My pa- my family moved here to Qatar. Oh, okay. So that brought uh, you here. Yeah, that brought me here actually. And what was your first role? What job did you get? Uh, 
It actually, um, I didn't want to move to Qatar. It was <laughs> <laughs> Why not? And what year was that? What year? I was coming and going because they were already here since 2004. Oh, okay, so you and were kind of visiting, still working in Lebanon. Yes. And you thought, no. No, no. no. I was into partying and my well, friends Lebanon, were in Lebanon. And that's, it's, yeah, it, exactly. It does have a reputation for being a party town. And uh, it took a war when 2006 war came in, in Lebanon with the Israelis. Oh. Um, then... I was kind of, I need to evacuate. You need to go, obviously. yeah. yeah. Um, I was freelancing there at the end. And, you know, I was working with this company, but then I stopped and I was doing my own pr marketing projects. I yeah. was really wanting to do that. So um, 2005 and the um, uh, assassination of Hariri happened. Things kind of, in terms of business, uh, slowed down in, uh, in Beirut, so... And were you, were you uh, when you were doing business, were you communicating in French? You know, French, you, yes, Just definitely. mainly French, not Arabic? My French went, I mean, I, I study French, but until I, you don't practice a language, you don't really, are, you are not really fluent. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, at the time in, in Lebanon, English wasn't very common. No. Uh, so it was Arabic or French, yeah. and obviously French, I already had the basis, yeah, no, exactly. it was easier for me. Yeah. But I did learn Arabic, so oh, okay. I do I do speak Lebanese, like they say yeah. it. So even though here I don't I don't practice it enough, so no. But I understand everything. Oh, that's good. Oh, I've got to be careful. Well, I don't speak any <laughs> Arabic, so but anyone who's yeah. Arabic. Um, so, so, and then you I came arrived in Qatar. Yeah. 2006. Then yes. you were forced to come. You know, literally, yeah. Pack your bags and come and over I here in I worked with the Asian Games. My dad was. Uh, working on that project so he got me a job then Hold on, how was he working on the asian games he, he was, was an engineer yeah for so, the project management oh, okay and, right yeah of the asian games so, so he got you a job he got me a job because that was big uh that in 2006 big, yeah, when the yeah. asian games came everybody was preparing for that yeah yeah and everyone seemed to be involved with the asian games true but did you have the pleasure of wearing that uh, crazy uh, tracksuit no i actually <laughs> left before that <laughs> Sorry. What was I, it? It was it was a combination of purple, yellow, blue, yes, orange. Or, oh, it was terrible. It was very random. It was uh, it was a cr yeah. Yeah, and then um, nobody expected that it would rain, so it was a disaster. Ah, a bit with the, rain. the opening games. Yeah, and the I was there. Games. Luckily, I was under the sheltered bit. Yeah. You know, there was a stadium, so basically the main Khalifa Stadium had half of it was covered, and half and half uh, yeah. of it wasn't. And there was the biggest downpour that happened that night during the opening ceremony. Correct. Which was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy, yeah. And I was so thankful I was in the covered bit. So, yeah, then I traveled for six months. So, just go back. What was your involvement with the Asian Games? What were you doing? Uh, I was doing a bit of everything. Yeah. My title was venue, manag venue assistant manager. Yeah. But, yeah, you do anything that goes yeah. your way. No, that's basically. true. Okay. Yeah. So, yes, then you took six months off. Took six months off and went traveling, went to Colombia um, for the second time in my life. <laughs> yeah. So you were there until you were seven? Yeah. And so that was the next time that you actually went back to Colombia? The second time. I mean, okay. uh, I went there. When my brother got married, we passed by with my mother and visit for the yeah. first time ever. Wow. And this was my second time. I was going to spend Christmas with my family. Um, then I went and spent some time with my brother. He's settling in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to figure out where should I go back to Europe? Should I stay in Qatar, in the Middle East? Um, I, my plan was to go back to Europe. Yeah, That's what I wanted. But thank God happened? I didn't do it because, you know, the crisis and came. Then the, cr and then the crash happened, yeah, in yeah, 2008. Exactly. Yeah. I know I, I'm very lucky I didn't make that decision. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was No, good. this was the kind of the safe bubble at the time when exactly. every, everything else in the world was uh, falling falling down. Yeah. So I decided to stay in Qatar and give okay. it a shot. Um, and what's your next job? Um this because, is the long story, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is, actually. I mean, now I'm thinking, oh, my God, I did a lot of things. You did. <laughs> um, uh, so I started working with Nasser bin Khaled. Um, um, and um, uh, I was doing office manager, marketing, a little bit of everything. And what do they do? They, I was started working with one of the subsidiaries that was um, interior designing. Okay. But they were focused on wood. And the owner was a friend. Uh, a Lebanese friend of mine. 
um, didn't last very long, and um, uh, they were opening another company with the same holding yeah. um, for project management. And I did project management all my life because of my dad's background. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did the interview, they liked me, so I did, this is another startup. This is my second startup in oh, Qatar. Okay. So because I had the knowledge and everything, so yeah. I put together the company and um, and uh, I started working with them. Um, they, be, they were the distributors of Primavera Project Planner. Okay. And uh, this is one of the uh, software tools that they use in oil and gas and construction. Oh, really? And so it was kind of booming here. Yeah. It was doing very well. But at one time, I really wanted to change and do marketing. I didn't study um, like seven years of my life marketing. No, that did my was masters, your... and I wanted to really experience that. So I was looking for a change into the agency yeah. side of, yeah. uh, and I found it. I mean, um, and were I there, started working with. And what year was that? What? That was two thousand and nine, ten, eleven. Oh, two thousand eleven. Okay. Yeah. And were there a lot of agencies around that time? Yes, they were starting building up. And yeah. um, there were all the major agencies. Obviously, I, at, at the age I had and the experience that I had, I was looking for something more, smaller so that I can learn. And okay, not a big agency, but exactly. more kind of a startup or small business. A small business, yeah. yeah. So who did you find? Uh, I worked for Creative <laughs> Action, yeah. I know, but uh, okay. Yes. And you worked there for... I was there for two years, actually. Okay. I, I mean, I had a great team. Um, you met Charlotte and uh, another our uh, um, pro um, graphic designer. Fantastic team. Yeah. We did a lot. Um, then they started leaving all of them, and uh, I left too. Okay. Yeah. And you moved. And uh, then I moved to the airport. Okay. <laughs> As marketing manager, yes. For the actual. Um Hamad International Hamad Airport. International Airport. Yeah. And what was that like? Because that, that was a brand new airport. Yeah, it was fantastic. Really good experience. Were, were you there at the beginning when it opened, or were no? You? It was after the opening. Okay. Yeah. So it was. And nice. was it? But that's a big organ. Was that a big organization compared Qatar to what? Airways, yeah, absolutely. Obviously. So what was that Corporate, like? Corporate. I mean, I it was it was overwhelming at the beginning. Yeah. I can believe it. Uh, super micromanagement. That's what uh, I've heard. Corporate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, corporate culture. It was crazy. So the adaptation, it it was difficult. It was difficult to adapt. So where before you were working for a small business that you probably were doing everything to a big corporation like that where you probably were slotted into a certain role and not able to, you know, breathe? That's or, true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You felt like a robot. You know, this is your role. You have to recommend a decision takes forever, but that's their processes and procedures, yeah, no. you know. Um, I always wanted to experience that anyway, because I had a lot of friends that went there and they lasted one month, two months. I actually lasted two, almost two years. And well so, done. Yeah. And were you, so you, you knew friends that had already been uh, working for Keller Airways um, beforehand, before you took the job. So wasn't yeah. there kind of some nervousness of, am I doing the right thing? Uh, no, I mean, You just me, wanted to... I love the airport. I did yeah. my practice when I did travel and tourism in in Barcelona airport yeah. in Prat, and um, it it kind of that the, the the atmosphere of an airport is amazing. It's just oh, the I traveling, love airport. I, I, there's something about the airports, rush. Yes. exactly. It's so, like that mystic kind of feeling that uh, you know you're true. Well, you you're in holiday mode anyway, aren't you? Before you get on the plane, so it's just like, and you can see people just wandering around like. You know, um, yes, and the passerbys and the rushes there, and all. Yeah. It's, it's such an amazing um, experience and, and, and view. I mean, I used to go to the bridge on top of immigration because yeah. our offices were closed and, and look at the people going from one side, from the air side and the, and the land side. That's, that's how we call it. Uh, and it was amazing. It was, it was really nice to see the difference and, and how the behavior and, you know. I just want to get your uh, point of view with the airport because, uh, you know, we have got the World Cup coming up in uh, four years' time. Mm -hmm. Do you think, um, you know, the airport is going to be able to handle the amount of traffic that's going to come through? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. They are, they are preparing since, they are. Two, since four years ago, they are preparing. Because it's, my only concern is uh, with uh, uh, customs, um, you know, passport control. 
it, there's oh, always a. That's ev- more of a Ministry of Interior, oh, not the it? airport. Okay, so the airport. It, the stuffing is okay. from the MOI, yeah, oh. not the airport, yeah. Because in the airport, you have many stakeholders. I know, but, but the airport is, you know, that's your first impression when you arrive. That's true. You know, and, uh, that's and there what, is that huge back, backlog of, uh, you know, yeah, I people. think HI is doing a very good job um, working with all the stakeholders. Yeah, you yeah. Know. It's not only uh, immigration, it's also customs because we have the other side. When, yes. when people go through yeah. uh, NDIA, which is the the, um, the aviation uh, authority, and um, many other stakeholders, I'm yeah. putting all and I'm, I'm working together to make sure that this is like, successful. Yeah, as you can, um, as it can be. Huh? And their their premise is the airport is a fantastic. It's such a it's the best airport. Oh, it's a beautiful airport. Yeah. No, I I remember the old airport. You you remember the of old course. airport? Of course. Oh my gosh. That was just like a little <laughs> local airport. If anyone's been to a local airport somewhere in Europe, you know, it was like uh, yes. arriving at some local airport. But uh, no, this is you this know, the is facilities state is, of the art is facilities. Yeah. Um, and 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 the, the collaboration they have been done with the uh, Qatar museums is fantastic. I think it gives that touch of elegance and yeah. class. Oh no, there's definitely yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. So you were only there for so you were there for two years, mm-hmm. not only there for yeah, two yeah, years. No, so that, that's a, that, that is an achievement. Um, so why did you leave? Um, well, it was starting to get a little bit, a bit difficult uh, with the team there. Okay. And um, I was offered. Well, I was headhunted by Virgin. Wow! They sent me um, a, an email saying, "Would you be interested?" Yeah. And at the beginning, I said no. <laughs> then um, things that worked it wasn't working very well. Uh, so I decided to give it a shot. Yeah. And I've never done retail. Uh, I think Virgin. Um, but listen, gives listen. you the, the, I mean, in terms of marketing, if you really want to go into marketing, Virgin is oh, the they're, best. they're absolutely as a brand, yeah. as uh, the way they brand. market themselves, absolutely, yeah. yeah, that's it. Everyone knows about them, and uh, they're very clever. So, but looking at your history, you're not scared of uh, trying any sort of uh, job or you know role. No, I like. Changing and I like trying things. And but this you is think what I with that experience, that's why you were headhunted, you know, with the, the vast amount of experience that you had. Because, and how did they find you? Is it generally through LinkedIn that they, LinkedIn, yeah. they basically saw your profile and went, yeah. this is the lady for us? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I like to ask uh, Arman. Arman is amazing. I mean, he was the one that coordinated everything yeah. and, and, and believed in me. So, so um, how has that experience been for Virgin? Um, oh, fantastic. And you've it's been there for two years? Almost two years, yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, Qatar was, was micromanagement, very limited yeah. in terms of creativity, in terms of what you can do. So I went completely to the other uh, side of the spectrum. Uh, no, I remember you saying, because we had a coffee the other week, and you were saying how Virgin, you know, you were in this role, and it was just like, okay, what do I do? You yes. Know? And they yeah. were just le- letting you... Come up I, with um, yeah, super macro macro management. And actually, my boss told me, Paula, you have to learn how to do more macro instead of micro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that I was, you know, very open, but you know, uh, I'm learning a lot. Yeah. My learning curve is fantastic. I'm so happy. My boss, I think, is the best boss I've ever had. Yeah, uh, he's so knowledgeable, and and his advice and his guidance is is amazing. And the whole team, I mean, is is super amazing. No, that's great to hear. Yeah, and and you were saying that they've just gone through um, like a new brand. Um, New logo, new, face. new logo, kind of a facelift. Yeah, uh, facelift just locally logo. or no, throughout. globally. Yeah, and yeah. can you let people know that slight change or? Well, what we was used the... to have the Virgin Mega Store. Um, I mean, the Virgin brand has them different aspects. You have Virgin Mobile uh, and others, but for us, it's Virgin Mega Store, and we we always have to use the Virgin and Mega Store together. Okay. Um, but it was a square and the mega store was kind of outside of the box. Um, so now it's Virgin mega store, like your typical Virgin and mm. on the bottom mega store, but there is no boundaries. There's no boundaries. Uh, it's all red. So yeah. 
Well, it's always been red. It's always been red. It would always be <laughs> virgin red. But, but basically, it's saying we have no borders. We, yes. you know, we basically are open and yeah, uh, like they all say, with virgin skies the limit. So, yeah, yeah. Is that to promote promote the uh, airline? <laughs> sky's <laughs> the limit. I don't know. No, it's kind no. of you know you come up with an idea and if it sounds feasible and within the brand uh, uh, guidelines, why not? Yeah. Let's try it. Let's do it. So I think this is what Richard wants. Yeah. <laughs> so why do we have retail stores here in the Middle East and not back in the UK? What's Oh, interesting question. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the core business of Virgin Megastore was records and music. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember movies. it well. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you know, we are going to um, digital revolution. Yeah. So I don't think anybody buys more records. And I mean, the vinyl is coming back kind of because of the um, Oh, yeah, the it's more and the yeah, quality the vinyl, that it has. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah, music records and things like that. Um, the market is, is, is but coming your up store is more than that, though. Now. But yeah, so in the Middle East, with the guidance of our previous president, they managed to diversify mm. into multimedia and accessories and uh, what we call now lifestyle, which previously was Redbox, um, fashion, so unique items of, of, of fashion, toys, you know, toys are really into more educational toys as much as we can try. Of course, you find uh, other ones that are common, but um, stationary that are very unique. So, um, yeah, because I've noticed uh, going into the store that there's some items that I've just seen on like um, these kind of um, uh, the crowdfunding uh, websites where they have, I think one of them was like a key ring uh, where you could put so many keys within this key ring holder yeah that's really and cool. <laughs> it was a crowd it was a crowdfunding uh, you know um company Brother. yeah so they must have how virgin the buyers are fantastic yeah so, so the buyers are always looking for something uh, they're always on the look for yeah. something unique yeah and this is the, what we promote in virgin you always you know it's a lifestyle um store yeah um so where we can cater from the grandparents to the little children no that's what i love about it you know yeah. you walk in there and it and it always changes there's always something new that uh we you try can to find be, yeah yeah always you know you've creative. got your you've got your apple you've got your record bit you've got your games but then you have other stuff that in the store that you know yes, so it's like exactly. a treasure trove of uh kind of items and gifts. And this is why it survived in the Middle East, yeah. obviously, because we diversified and we kind of revamp it to cater more for the, the society that we are living in right now. Yeah. And yeah. You, you mentioned um, in our coffee conversation the other week that uh, you have uh, incentives to bring the community to the store as well. You yes. Know, can you, you know, just give us a brief insight? Well, we always kind of look activities. into um, to keep doing activities mm. and creating awareness um, about our stores and about what we do and our products. So we do like story time for the children. Uh, we do these activities um, once a month in, yeah. and we rotate the stores and we invite, um, we try to communicate it through all the channels so that it's spread around. We invite people to come with the children, all families that is welcome, the refreshments, activities for the children and we do the readings um, every reading every story has a theme this the theme right now is going to be back to school because obviously we are on back to school uh, season uh, next month is going to be Halloween and then the next one is going to be National Day and then the festive season and so on we also have activities for the gaming uh, section where we do competitions uh, we're now running a competition for Fortnite, uh, very, very popular now in the gaming uh, community. Yeah. Uh, FIFA is coming up because it's going to be the new release. Oh, okay. Uh, we also do um, um, CSR programs, mm -hmm. obviously. We're running now uh, one right now for, the, for a charity. We're giving all backpacks to children in need. Nice. Um, so uh, we're running that. Um, so that's very important for Virgin to be part, you know, involved yes, with the community definitely. as well as not just a store. 
Definitely. Super. And also taking care of our customers. What yeah. are the customers' needs? And what do they feel like we need to give them? So it's always listening to the customers because inversion is a it's all about the customer experience. Mm. So the minute you step into our stores, is what experience are we going to give you? Yeah, no, uh, And it's really important for us to do that. Um, and all, the whole team. And what, so what's coming up in the future? Is there any, anything, ex, any exciting plans, more expansion here in Qatar? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll see about that one. <laughs> yes. Let's hope that, you know, uh, yes. We're yeah. going to have something exciting coming up um, since we are running up to the World Cup. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Something something exciting is going to come. Super. Definitely. No, I'm sure it is. Um, and you're you're supporting International Podcast Day, aren't you? You're going to be um, yes. going in with us and uh, we'll be shouting out about the International Podcast Day on the 30th of September, I think. Uh, correct. Yeah, so uh, if anyone wants to come and join us, uh, we'll be um, broadcasting from uh, the Virgin Megastore in Villaggio. That's correct. Um, so we're happy to have you come down and uh, um, learn more about what po podcasting is all about and also get to meet Paula and myself and the hosts of Doha Heat. And if you haven't been to Virgin, to see the store and the Absolutely. amazing products that we have. It's an amazing, amazing <laughs> store. Well, Paula, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's been a great journey just to listen to your life story and uh, and to get more of an insight on uh, what Virgin is doing here. And, uh, you know, if you meet Richard, you know, s send him an uh, invitation to say, you know, we're... Oh, my God, we've been trying to... We'd be so happy here. to have him to come on the show or even if he just wants to do a Skype call. That'd be Hopefully great. one day. Yes, yeah? definitely. All right. Why not? Thank you, Paula. So... <laughs> Thank you for everyone uh, listening and watching. And if you want to subscribe to us, you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher. Or if you have an iPhone, say, hey, Siri, hey Siri subscribe to Your Onion and she'll do it for you. Thank you very much and have a good week.